Hey, I'm Mary, and this is my audience this week. <laughs> Last weekend, a schoolmate of mine jumped out of a window. He ended up needing surgery on his severely broken collarbone. The reason behind this outlandish behavior? A bad LSD trip involving zombies. Yes, the boy saw zombies, and in terror, he decided to jump out his window to escape. This event prompted me to discuss the history and ill effects of LSD use with you today. Because even though it's not as popular as marijuana or any other drugs, it is exponentially more dangerous. The psychedelic drug LSD has also been called acid, water, California sunshine, dots, electric Kool-Aid, and countless other colorful nicknames since it was first sold in the streets in the early 1960s. It makes sense that LSD would be popular. It's easy to take, colorless, odorless, and tasteless, and ingesting just a tiny amount is enough to feel the effects. It is also easy to conceal, since today's doses are usually found on tiny squares of absorbent paper. LSD can be difficult to detect because of the small amount ingested and the fact that it's quickly metabolized by the body. Finally, LSD is cheap compared to other drugs. A single dose usually costs no more than $5, and often it can be gotten for free. A Swiss chemist named, named Albert Hoffman first synthesized LSD. He was working on a research project involving a parasitic fungus called ergot, which grows on rye. In the 1930s, researchers at the Rockefeller Institute in New York isolated lysergic acid from an ergot compound. This research was the basis for Hoffman's work. In 1938, Hoffman derived the 25th in a series of derivatives taken from the compound. It was LSD-25. He thought that LSD-25 might stimulate breathing and circulation, but tests didn't show anything special and the study was abandoned. Five years later, Hoffman's thoughts returned to LSD-25's potential. He felt that it hadn't been fully explored, so he took the step of synthesizing another batch for further testing. During the process, however, Hoffman began to feel strange. He stopped his work and went home early. He was being affected by a remarkable re restlessness combined with a slight dizziness. While at home, he was in a dreamlike state and perceived an uninterrupted stream of fantastic pictures, extraordinary shapes, and kaleidoscopic colors. At the time, Hoffman decided that he must have gotten some of the solution on his finger. The next day, Hoffman purposely dosed himself with LSD. He took 250 micrograms, which is 10 times more than today's typical minimum dose. Hoffman be became delirious and could barely speak. Initially, he panicked and asked his laboratory assistant to call the doctor. The doctor could find nothing wrong with Hoffman other than the fact that his pupils were dilated. He had normal blood pressure, heart rate, and respiration. After the panic wore down, he was reintroduced to the kaleidoscope. After a trial on animals, LSD was given to research institutes and doctors to use in psychiatric experiments. The research was compelling, enough to convince the companies to patent LSD and market it as Delicid, in 1947. It was sold in 25 microgram tablets for use in analytical psychotherapy. By 1960, there had been hundreds of papers published in scientific and medical journals on the various uses of LSD. It was the talk of the psychiatric community. But by 1966, production had stopped. There have been very few reports of LSD overdoses that resulted in death or permanent health problems. The real physical damage associated with LSD comes from what can happen when someone loses inhibitions and has poor judgment, skewed perceptions, or an intense sense of immortality while tripping. LSD users have accidentally killed themselves by doing such things as walking in front of cars, getting into car accidents while tripping, or even falling from windows or buildings. Heavy LSD users can develop profound social problems completely ruin their sleep cycles, and lose interest in eating and personal hygiene. They become uninterested in participating in the world going on around them. They feel completely disconnected from anyone else. 
The real problem is that because they're taking LSD so often, they think LSD is creating the illusion that their life is a mess instead of recognizing that their life is actually really a mess. In the United States today, LSD is a Schedule I controlled substance under the Controlled Substances Act, or CSA. This means that the federal government believes LSD to have high abuse potential and a lack of accepted safe use when taken under medical supervision. No current medical uses. The federal penalty for the first offense of LSD possession is a maximum of one year in prison or a minimum five of $1,000. Additional offenses can raise the prison time to as much as three years. The penalties for making or selling LSD are based not only on the number of offenses, but also on the amount of drugs involved. So even if it's the first offense, if the amount is more than 10 grams, the offender can spend five to 40 years in jail and face a fine of $2 million. Higher amounts of drugs can result in a life sentence. Please consider these issues if you ever decide to try your luck with LSD. Remember that from the very beginning, LSD has been dangerous, causing panic, delirium, and perception issues. Consider the fact that you could die, consider the legal ramifications, and consider the years in the federal prison that you might have to spend. Take this information into account, please.